There's a reason why this plane is called the Pig. Meet the F-111 Aardvark, the creation dispatched to assassinate Libya's leader in an attack. Hello and welcome back to our channel. We're going to talk about the F-111 Aardvark military vehicle today. The F-111 Aardvark was a low-altitude strike jet developed by General Dynamics as a result of a hasty marriage between rival Air Force and Navy objectives, with Defense Secretary Robert McNamara serving as the minister. Despite its problematic youth, it matured into a formidable high-tech night bomber with a sleek and attractive profile that served for decades. Please stick with us until the end. Hit like and don't forget to share this video. Subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Let's get started. The Air Force realized in the early 1960s that new surface-to-air radar-guided missiles like the Soviet SA-2 could reach their slow, high-altitude aircraft. As a result, it came up with a new concept, a long-range supersonic bomber that could fly near to the ground and avoid radar smaller detection. Simultaneously, the United States Navy was looking for a speedy, long-range interceptor that's based on carriers with air-to-air -air missiles capable of destroying Soviet bombers from afar. Robert McNamara, the newly selected defense secretary, was confident that a single aircraft could meet both needs, saving money on development. The Army and Navy were less enthusiastic about surrendering their objectives, but they were forced to work together on the TFX program. In 1962, General Dynamics was granted a contract. Because it was smaller than Air Force strategic bombers and the service refused to use the Navy's attack name, it was given the designation F for the fighter. The F-111 is powered by two TF-30 turbofan engines with revolutionary afterburner technology that is powerful and efficient. A large fuselage could hold up to 31,000 pounds of bombs and enough fuel for sorties of up to 2,500 miles, with external tanks providing another 1,000 miles. The F-111's designers had a difficult task. They required a jet that could fly at high speeds while still being able to take off and land on a short runway. Smaller wings reduce drag, allowing the plane to fly quicker, but they also reduce lift, requiring the plane to reach greater speeds before taking off, necessitating a longer runway. The F-105 Thunder Chief, for example, was a supersonic fighter bomber with very narrow wings that needed airstrips by a mile length for takeoff, limiting which airfields it could function from. The designers of the F-111 tried a new technology named as variable geometry or swing wings. These let the wings swing out at takeoff to generate the highest lift, then tuck inward to gain greater speeds mid-flight. The F-111 was the first of many important designs to include the technology. In a cockpit pod, the two-person crew sat side by side. If they wanted to get away, a rocket propelled the pod into the air where it landed on a parachute similar to a space capsule. The pioneering new terrain-following radar on the F-111, which tracked the ground directly in the plane's front and automatically changed the flight path to prevent a collision, was a crucial breakthrough. F-111s could fly as low as 200 feet above the ground and make accurate corrections at high speeds without crashing, even at night or in severe weather. The F-111's ability to hunt in the dark with its snout neared to the ground gave it the nickname Aardvark. Early F-111s showed promise, capable of exceeding the speed of sound at Mach 1.2 at less altitude and more than twice that, Mach 2.5 at high altitude while landing on a 2,000-foot runway. It was the first tactical aircraft to fly from the U.S. to Europe without stopping for refueling in the middle of the flight. The F-111's design, on the other hand, was skewed toward the Air Force's requirements. In trials, the carrier-based interceptor variant, the F-111B, performed poorly, barely exceeding Mach 1. The naval version, which was an expensive, forced compromise, was eventually discarded, leaving all the people millions of dollars poorer. However, many F-111B's more promising design ideas found their way onto the F-14 Tomcat. The F-111s of the Air Force had a rocky start in battle. In 1968, a group of six F-111As was moved to Vietnam, and three of them crashed in 55 missions only, all due to faulty wing stabilizers. The Air Force was compelled to withdraw the F-111 and spend $100 million to fix the problem. The F. Aardvark didn't show its true potential until the linebacker raids in 1972. F-111s bombed air defense batteries in North Vietnamese airfields while skimming beneath North Vietnam's massive radar network at night, reducing the resistance to approaching B-52 attacks. Other bombers needed fighter escort, electronic warfare support, and mid-air refueling, but Aardvarks didn't, and they could fly in bad weather. Throughout 4,000 missions, only six F-111s were lost in battle, making it one of the war's lowest loss rates. 
In May 1975, when the Cambodian Khmer Rouge took power on the container ship SS Mayaguez, F-111s were involved in the U.S. military's final combat operation in Southeast Asia. The Mayaguez was discovered by two aardvarks diverted from a plane of training. Later, a Khmer Rouge patrol boat accompanying the hijacked ship was sunk by an F-111. There were 563 F-111s manufactured in all, including all variants. Following the F-111A, the F-111D, and E versions improved the electronics and engine inlets of Aardvark as well as increasing the engine's thrust. The FB-111, a strategic bomber with enhanced engines that stretched two feet long to handle greater fuel, was another variation. Seventy-five of them were assigned to the Strategic Air Command. The F-111C was only available in Australia. It was a hybrid of the FB-111 and F-111E in terms of design. The final F-111F had 35% more thrust engines, updated radar, and a paved track infrared targeting pod, which let the crew detect targets on the surface and shoot them with precision-guided explosives. At the cost of $1.5 billion, 42 F-111As were modified into unarmed EF-111A Raven electronic jamming stages beginning in the mid-1970s. The jammer's current caused the hairs on the heads of the crew to stand on end as it crackled through the flight when it was operating. As a result, Raven's pilots dubbed it the Sparkvark. The tail fin's receiver pod distinguishes the EF-111. The F-111 continued serving with the Air Force of Australia until 2010, earning it the nickname Pig. The Australians received an extra 15 FB-111s and 4 F-111As after receiving a batch of 24 F-111Cs in 1973. The F-111s provided Australia with the strength to project military force across large lengths of the Pacific Ocean, strengthening its diplomatic clout, although never being employed in combat. For Australian air shows, pigs were the pride. They commonly performed a maneuver known as the dump and burn, in which gasoline was dropped and ignited with the afterburners. Four F-111s have been transformed into surveillance aircraft after being upgraded to carry anti-shipping missiles. They were eventually replaced by 24 F-18F Super Hornets because of their high operating prices. While the F-111 is no longer in service, a similar aircraft is still in operation. The Russian Sukhoi Su-24 Fencer was developed shortly after the F-111 and shares a striking resemblance in design and function right down to the swing wings. Although not quite on par with the Aardvark when we talk about range, speed, or armament load, about three times as many Su-24s were built, and over 300 are still in service with various World Air Forces today. They've been deployed in battles over Syria, Chechnya, Ukraine, Libya, and Afghanistan. In 2015, a Turkish F-16 shot down a Russian Su-24 attacking rebels of Syria, sparking a huge diplomatic controversy. On the first night of Operation Desert Storm on 17th January 1991, aardvarks flew low over the desert, dropping laser-guided bombs on Iraqi air defenses and vital military targets. Meanwhile, EF-111 Ravens escorted coalition strike packages deep into Iraq. During the Iraq War of 1991, a total of 18 F-111Es and 66 F-111Fs were deployed, flying 5,000 flights. The Iraqi Air Force, contrary to famous assumptions, did not make things easy on the first day. Two F-111s were disturbed by MiG-23s firing infrared-guided R-23 missiles. An R-60 missile fired by a MiG-29 struck another. The hardy aardvarks returned to base in all three incidents. Thank you for watching. The big plane weighed 20 tons when empty and more than twice that much when loaded. It's absolutely amazing. Let us know your feedback in the comment box below. Hit the bell icon, stay tuned, and stay safe.